Hello there, if you are new to Blender and you wish to make concept art, then this video will help you get started. In this tutorial, we're going to demonstrate how to make something like this from scratch in Blender. And also a little bit of Photoshop. A quick disclaimer, this tutorial is a shortened version of our much more extensive course available over on Gumroad. With that out of the way, let's get started. Firstly, the UI. This big open window here is what we call the 3D viewport. It's probably where you'll spend 95% of your time as it is where you build your scene. Up here in the right corner, we have the outliner. The outliner is a listed hierarchy of all the objects in your scene and it's where you manage everything. In the bottom right, we have the properties panel. The properties panel is divided into different tabs that all show different information about the different aspects of your scene. Note that there's a little gap here. The gap determines global changes and local changes. The local changes are related to the object that you currently have selected. And everything above is related to global scene changes. Navigation. Everything in Blender revolves around the middle mouse button. If you hold down your middle mouse button, then you can start rotating your scene. If you hold down shift and middle mouse button, you start panning the view. If you hold down control and middle mouse button, you dolly zoom in and out. If you simply scroll on the middle mouse button, you step zoom out and in. To select something, you click left click. You can box select everything if you hold down left click and box select. To deselect, simply click into empty space. To so move an object selected and come over to the properties panel. Here you can see the location, rotation and scale values for your object. If you start moving the values in location X, for example, you see that our object starts sliding in X. Same goes for rotation and scale. These attributes also have hotkeys. To move an object, press G, and then choose the axis of the desired direction, X. To move along X, Y. To move along Y, Z. To move along Z. The same goes for rotation. Rotation is on R, rotation. Choose the axis of rotation, X, Y, Z. The same goes for scale, uniform scale, scale along X, scale along Y, and scale along Z. I'll now be adding on-screen inputs on the bottom left here. You can follow along with my shortcuts. To add new objects to the scene, to add more objects to our scene, we can come to add. And here we have all the different kinds of objects we can add to our Blender scene. We have meshes, curves, lights, and cameras. But if we simply hover over the add menu, we can see there's a shortcut associated with this menu. Now, if there's a shortcut associated with a feature in Blender, you can always hover over the button for it, and then it will show you that shortcut. Knowing this new shortcut, now we can now press Shift A. We get access to the same menu, and we can create a cube. Now we can see we have two cubes in our outliner. I'll move the cube out. Additionally, I'll also create a plane. Base it out. And I'll create a sphere. Like so. With these simple tools, we can start blocking out a scene. Just using our knowledge of navigation and manipulating objects through rotation, scale and location, we can now block out a little environment here. So the idea for this environment is a little monastery on a sort of cliff-like terrain. The monastery will have a central tower and a larger dome-like structure on the side and a tower further out with a bridge attached to the main tower. Please note that all I'm doing here is creating new objects from the Shift A add menu and rotating, scaling and grabbing my objects to move them around. At this stage we could even grab a screenshot of our environment and bring it into Photoshop and create a sketch using it as a sort of perspective guide. To develop our block out further, we can start getting into modeling. In Blender, we differentiate between what is called object mode and edit mode. Object mode is where you interact with all your objects, and edit mode is where you edit the objects themselves, like the vertices, the edges, and the faces. To go into edit mode, you select an object, go to the drop down in the top left, and select edit mode. The hotkey for this is tab, and it switches between object and edit mode. Once in edit mode, you can switch between vertices, edges, and faces. 
the hotkey for these are one, two, and three. So by clicking one, we can manipulate the vertices just like we were manipulating objects before. By clicking two, we can manipulate edges, rotate, and scale them. And by clicking three, we can manipulate faces, scaling, rotating, and so on. To better see my object as I'm editing it, I will return to object mode. Select my top halves here and hide them by clicking the little eye in the outliner. The hotkey for hiding something in the viewport is H. Unhide everything, you press Alt H. Now we can better see our model. I click my model and enter edit mode. While in edit mode, I'm in face mode now. I'll select the top face here. And now we can begin extrusion. On the left side here, you'll see something called the toolbar. The toolbar will change depending on the mode you're in. It's also a great place for exploring different kinds of tools. To extrude a face from our current selection, all we have to press is E for extrusion. This will let us add geometry to our mesh. We can also extrude a face and then immediately scale by pressing S. Then we're scaling it inwards. Then we can extrude again. We can extrude outwards and up, in and up. This helps us add definition to our model. If we wanted rounded corners on our edges here, we could select them by going into edge mode and shift select several edges at once by holding shift and left clicking. Now that they're all selected, we can press Ctrl B for bevel and edges start to round out. To add more loops inside the bevel, we can scroll our mouse wheel and things start to round out. Another useful technique is to add edge loops. To add edge loops, you press Ctrl R and a yellow line appears around the different edge loops on your model. Clicking somewhere will initiate it and you can start dragging it around on your model. By clicking left click, you will place it. If you're adding edge loops, while the yellow line is active, you can scroll with your mouse wheel and more edge loops will appear. If you accidentally start dragging them around and you want it to be placed precisely in the middle, you can right click to center them. This is the general idea of edit mode. This is where you perform these kinds of tasks like extrusion, bevel, and much more. Sometimes when editing, you'll have trouble seeing the face you want to interact with, like the bottom of the cylinder. Now you could move everything up, then exit it. But if you want to see your model in a different way, we can start using our viewport shadings. Currently we are on solid mode, but if we step one to the left here, we can enter wireframe. And here we see this transparent view of our model. We can access our faces, our edges, and our vertices through our model. The hotkey for this is set, which brings up a pie menu. This pie menu lets us switch between the different kinds of viewport shadings. Solid. Click on solid to switch. Click on wireframe to switch. Or simply hold your mouse over them and let go, and it'll switch quickly becoming second nature. Another really useful feature of Blender when blocking out your scene is what we call modifiers. To demonstrate, we'll create a new cube, bring it into center here and move it out. Modifiers can be found over here on the right with the icon of a wrench. Clicking on them, you'll see a list here of all the different modifiers you can add. The most common one is probably mirror and array. We'll start off with a mirror modifier. The mirror modifier is a procedural effect that will always be on your object. The mirror modifier mirrors the mesh data of your object. So if we enter edit mode and we start moving our faces, we can see that they start mirroring each other. And anything we do on the left side here will be mirrored on the right side. 
Additionally, we could also add an array modifier. Now our object has been duplicated to the left of it. This is caused by the array modifier. Note that modifiers in Blender are stacked and can be moved around to act at different times of the model. So here we are arraying the initial model to the left first and then mirroring it. We can move this back. And then now the original model is being mirrored first and then arrayed. We could add more arrays to our array modifier, doing lots of duplicates. And we can still enter edit mode and manipulate our model. With these techniques, we can really start adding detail to our block out. So like before, I'm going to go into a time lapse and continue building on the scene uh, using the techniques that we've just talked about. You can really see how the modifiers especially help us add a lot of detail rapidly to our scene. Um, and with these added tools, it just becomes a lot easier and a lot faster to structure out the scene. You will also see me duplicating things here and there, and this can very simply be done just by clicking on an object, then Shift D. This works both in edit mode and in object mode. In general, I really like the approach of building a few assets and then combining them together to rapidly fill up the scene with detail. It also ensures some sort of consistency between the different architectures. Overall, I think our scene is really starting to shape up. I especially like the central tower with its ridges. The new dome structure was really easy to use on the other towers as well. I also managed to create a fourth tower in the back. Our scene is really starting to come together, but it could really use some life in the form of materials and color. To give our scene color, we have to assign it materials to our objects. Materials are Blender's way of displaying color, roughness, metallicness, and much more. To do this, we'll select an object and go to the materials window in the bottom right. Here, there's a big button that says new. We'll click it, and this will create a new material for this specific object. We can rename it. Stone, material. And here we can change a bunch of properties about this material. We could, for example, change the color. But we don't see the color change in the viewport. That's because we're in solid mode. To see our materials, the easiest way is to jump to the material preview right next to solid mode. Also available through the set by menu. Now we can see our materials. We can then change the color to get closer to what we want. I'm looking for something like a dark sandstone. Something like that. To apply the materials to other objects as well, we'll go to the object, jump to the material properties window, and go to this little drop down. Here we can see all of our materials. We can also search for them. Stone mat. Just enter, and the material gets assigned. To avoid having to do this for every object, we can select all the objects we wish to have the same material. And then select an object that has set material as the last item, so it shows in yellow, while the rest is orange. And then press Ctrl L to make a link. And here we can link the materials. To further change the properties of our materials, it's better if we head over to the shader editor. This we can access easily through the shading workspace in the top. This shows us our scene with a nice environment and a node editor for the materials. I will go ahead and assign the materials to all the missing objects and also create new materials for the domes and the rocks. To enhance my sandstone texture on my towers, I will drag and drop some images from my computer. These are seamless brick textures that have diffuse colors, roughness maps, and displacement maps. I can insert these to my node editor to define a texture. These textures can be further enhanced with procedural nodes in the node editor, and you start getting really interesting results. The material editor in Blender is quite powerful, and you can easily get lost in the infinite possibilities it has to offer. Now that our materials have been somewhat completed, we're still missing these flat, shaded, square planes on our domes. This is caused by the shading properties. To fix this, right-click the objects, 
and set it to shade smooth instead of the default, which is shade flat. To correct this problem on objects that have curved surfaces as well as flat surfaces, like on the cylinder, we'll have to set it to shade smooth, and then see that it softens out even our sharp corners. To fix this, we'll go to the mesh data properties, and go to normals, and then set it to auto smooth. 90% of the time this fixes it. Now that our materials have been completed, we could really benefit from some lighting. So we're going to jump back to the layout and check out our scene. Overall it's looking really good, but we could really use some sunlight. We already have this default point light in the scene, which I'll just go ahead and delete. Then I'll create a new light on Shift A, Light, and then Sun. I'll bring the Sun center stage, and then we can rotate. But we're not seeing the shadows yet. That's because we're in the material preview. It has its own lighting settings. To easily see our sunlight, we can jump to the render preview. Now we can see the shadows from our directional light. If we rotate our sun, we can see the shadows follow our environment. But we lost some of the color of the material preview. To quickly add some of this color to our scene, we can go up to the little drop down here, turn off scene world, and then choose an environment. I'll choose this one, and then decrease the strength to make my shadows pop more. I'll also increase the strength of my light by jumping to the light properties, and then going to strength, setting it to fine. I could also change the color of the light. We get more of an evening sun, something very yellow, or even the supernatural. I think we're going to go with something slightly yellowish. Like this. Lighting is really fun in Blender, as you get instant feedback. And there's lots of other lights to try out. But I always find that a good directional sunlight does most of the job, especially for outdoor environments. Our scene is more or less complete but we could really use some control over the framing and the camera. In our scene, we already have a camera by default, or we could have created a new one from the Shift A add menu. I will just use the default one. To enter the camera, select it, and press zero on the numpad. If you have several cameras, press control zero. To make sure you enter the specific one you selected. To pose the camera, you can move it around like any other object and rotate it. But to have a more intuitive workflow, you can enter the camera, and then you can open the end panel by clicking N on your keyboard. Then you go to view, and then you set camera to view. Now a red border appears around the camera, and this means it's now tied to your movement. So if you start looking around and navigating your scene, like usual, you can see that the camera follows. I will make sure to reset my camera rotation before continuing, by pressing Alt R while I have the camera selected. Alt R resets all the properties of the rotation in the camera, and I'll also reset the location on Alt G. Now I can zoom around and find a good angle. This is starting to go in the right direction, but I would really like a wider angle for my lens. To do that, I have to go to the camera properties over the properties panel. And here you can change the focal length for the camera. Setting it lower will make it wider. I can then zoom in and frame my shot. Maybe a bit too warped. Maybe something like 35 is a good call. I would also like a more cinematic shot and change the aspect ratio. To do that, I have to jump to the output properties. And here you can change the resolution for your output. I'll set it to 2100 by 900. A nice cinematic aspect ratio. Then I'll zoom out. I will turn off camera to view. So now I can freely navigate without changing my camera perspective. I can always jump into the camera again on zero. And I can hide that end panel on N. 
to get a quick render from Blender, we can turn off the overlays here and there. Then we go to view, and then viewport render image. This gives us exactly what our viewport is showing us. But we would actually like an output without the background. So we can close our window, go to the render properties, go down to film, then choose transparent. Now you can see our background is transparent. So when we render again, we get a transparent background and we can save that as a PNG file. And we can bring it into Photoshop. I think something important to think about once you get into Photoshop is what do you bring with you, right? So right now here, we just have a very simple setup with an alpha background with the 3D layer there. But actually one of the first things I do when I get into Photoshop is splitting up the image into, you know, kind of your foregrounds, middle grounds and backgrounds, just so I have those layers. But uh, if you start getting a bit more advanced in Blender, then um, you can actually bring over utilities to help you create these separations. And it just helps overall with the Photoshop workflow. With the piece itself, I'm going for this uh, highland mountain-ish range, you know, with eagles flying and uh, cliffs soaring through clouds. And the added texture of mountains and architectural detail uh, just comes from photo libraries online. And uh, then we're more or less done. And here we have the final piece. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you're interested in learning more, you can check out our extended course over on Gumroad. Uh, there we cover pretty much the basics of Blender targeted towards doing concept art. It doesn't matter if you're coming from a previous 3D package or if you're new to Blender or only used a little bit, and the first part will go through all the basics and then the second part will move towards making this castle scene. All this you can find in the link in the description below. Once again, thank you so much for watching and bye.